Now, there's going to be a couple things that we need to take into consideration when setting up the vote route. So first of all, what is the path we're going to use? Uh, and I think it makes sense just to set up a new path called slash vote. Uh, just like we have for slash users when it comes to handling anything with users, and we have slash post for handling anything with post, we're going to have the slash vote for handling voting. Now, the user ID, the user who's trying to vote on a, or, or like a post, uh, the ID of that user is going to be extracted from the JWT token, so we don't actually have to extract that from the body. We don't need to include it in the body. However, the body itself is going to contain two pieces of information. The ID of the post we're trying to like, as well as uh, the direction of the vote. And what I mean by direction is, um, do they want to vote on the post or do they want to remove a post? Because like any application, you know, maybe you accidentally clicked on a post to like it, but you realize you don't want to like it, so you click on it again to remove that. So vote direction of one means that we're going to like the post, and then a vote direction of zero means we're going to remove our like of the post. Now in our routers folder, we're going to create a new file, which is just going to be vote.py. So this is going to handle all the routing for our voting URLs. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the import statement from one of the other routers. And we'll set up our route. So let's set up the decorator first. And this is going to be a post. And I actually have to import router. And we got it. Let's create our router instance. So we'll say router equals API router. And we'll set up the prefix to be slash vote. And the tags, we're going to give it its own section, which is going to just say vote. And so now we can do at router.post. This is going to be a post operation because we have to send some information to the server. And the the URL is just going to be slash, so it's just going to be slash vote then. And since we're going to create a vote um, by default, uh, we're going to send a different status code. We're going to send a uh, 201 instead of the default 200. Then we'll define our function, which I'll just call vote. Now there's going to be a couple things that we have to pass in. So since we expect the user to provide some data in the body, it usually means we want to define a schema just so that we can ensure they send us the exact information. So let's set up our schema for voting. We'll create a class called vote. And so the first field should be a post ID, uh, which is going to be of type int. And then we're going to have a direction, which is going to be an integer as well, so it's either 0 or 1. Uh, however, I, I would like to be able to validate it to ensure that it's only 0 or 1. Uh, I couldn't exactly figure out if there was a way to do that in Pydantic, but one thing we can do is we can use uh, conint. So we'll, we'll import that from Pydantic automatically. So if you want to see the import, that's what it's going to look like. And we can say less than or equal to 1. So anything less than 1 uh, is going to be allowed. The only problem with this is that it allows for negative numbers, um, but that's okay. Uh, you know, if you guys figure out how to just specify zero and one, then um, you know, go ahead and replace that, and definitely leave it. Uh, leave that piece of information in the comments so that anyone else who wants to set up that specific restriction, uh, then we all know how to do that moving forward. And let's import our schema now. So we'll go up a directory. And let's also import database models. And uh, we're going to have to require the user to be logged in before uh, they can vote on something. So let's import OAuth2. And so here, we're going to set up the schema. And we're also going to set up the database so that we can make queries. And then lastly, we'll get the current user.
So once we get all of those dependencies, uh, looks like we have to import session as well. And I'm actually going to move this right below the first import. Not that it matters, but. And so we're going to set up logic for when the vote direction is one. So if I, if vote.dir, so we're pulling the, the direction from the vote schema equals equals one, then we're going to perform some logic. Else, if it's zero, then we're going to perform some other logic. So if we want to uh, create a vote, the first thing we're going to do is query to see, uh, you know, does the vote already exist? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say db.query. And we'll grab models.vote. And I'm going to filter based off of models.vote dot post underscore ID. And we're going to say it equals equals vote dot post underscore ID. So we're going to see if there's already a vote for this specific post ID. However, this isn't enough because remember, uh, multiple people can vote on the same post. So we actually have to do a second check. And we can add in a second condition by just doing a comma and then providing the second condition. So we have to say models dot vote dot user ID equals equals current user dot ID. And I'm going to save this and we're going to call this uh, vote underscore query. So this isn't going to actually query the database yet. This is just building out the query. And it's going to check to see if this specific user ultimately has voted for this specific post already or like this post. And I'm actually going to move this above the if statement. And you guys will see why we're going to do that in a bit. And we're going to then perform the query and just save that result under found vote equals vote underscore query dot first. All right. And so if the user wants to like a post, but we already found a post, that means he's already liked this specific post, so he can't like it again. So what we're going to say is if we already found a vote, then we're going to raise an HTTP exception. Uh, now the status code, we're going to use a new status code. I'm going to use status dot, and then this is going to be a 409 for conflict. And there's other status codes you could potentially use. I, I just decided that this is probably going to be the best fit. And then for detail, we're going to just pass an F string and say user. And then we pass in the user, which is a get, whoops, current underscore user dot ID has already voted on post with an ID of vote dot post underscore ID. All right. But if we didn't find a vote, then what we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new vote. So I'll say models dot vote. And so the post ID field is going to be set to vote dot post underscore ID. And then we can grab the user ID field from current user dot ID. So this will set the two properties and we'll save this as new underscore vote. And as usual to actually perform these changes or to add this to our database, we have to do db dot add new underscore vote and then a db dot commit. And we don't actually need to send the created vote back to the user because it doesn't really provide any useful information. Uh, we're just going to send a message that says successfully added vote. Now, if the user provided a direction of zero, that means they want to delete a pre-existing vote. So first of all, we'll say if not found vote. Right, we can't delete a vote that doesn't exist. So we'll raise an HTTP exception. Status code, um, I think we could just send a 404. And for the detail, I'll just say vote does not exist. But if we did find a vote, then we have to delete it. So I'll say vote underscore query. Remember, this is the query all the way at the top. I'll say dot delete. 
and then we can just do our synchronized session false. And we'll do a db.commit. And we'll just return a similar message. Successfully deleted vote. Okay, and this should kind of sum up uh, all of the logic in our path operation function. And at this point, we can just go ahead and test this out. So we'll go back to Postman. First of all, let's log in. All right, so we've logged in. And uh, what I'm going to do is create a brand new request. We'll call this vote. And this is going to be a vote. And in the body, we have to pass in the specific data. So let's actually grab a post um, or an ID of a post. So in this case, there's an ID of 10. Actually, first, let me double check who I'm logged in as. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to grab uh, a post with an ID of 10. So here we'll say post underscore ID 10. And then we'll say dir. Actually, is that what we called it? I actually forgot. Let's go to our schemas. Yeah, it's just dir. And this is going to be, let's, to, let's, this is going to be a one so that we can actually like the post. And remember, this should be a post request. So let's try this out. Let's hit send. And it looks like we ran into an issue. So let's check. And uh, it says that this specific route was not found. Uh, and so that's obviously because we didn't wire up this specific router. So let's go back to our main.py and let's import vote. And then we can just copy this and wire up vote.router. Yep. And once again, another typo. All right, let's give this a try now. So we'll hit send. It says we're not authenticated, so let me log in user. All right, now let's try this. And it says that I'm still unauthenticated. And guys, I realized why we're getting uh, not authenticated. That's just because we have a new request and we have to make sure that we set the authorization to be bearer token. And then we want to pass in our JWT variable. So it wasn't actually retrieving that. So now if I try this, we can see that we successfully added vote and uh, you know, just to make sure that it actually did that. Let's actually go into our database and take a look at our votes table. And so we liked a post uh, and it looks like um, I have some previous ones. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna delete everything uh, from our votes table just so we can make sure it works because I forgot who I'm even logged in as. So let's go to properties. Okay, sorry, uh, let me just do a query. And I'm just going to say delete from votes. So that's going to delete everything in our votes table. Perfect. And then we could just say select from votes. All right, we have nothing in there. And let's try this again. All right. And so now run this. We can see that we did like post 10, and I guess our ID is uh, 24, but we can just quickly verify that. If I do select star from users, and I'm logged in as Sanjeev123, so we can see that that has an ID of 24, so that works. Now, what I'm gonna do is, let's test to see what happens if I try to vote on a post that I've already voted on. So I'm gonna keep the vote direction to be a one, and I know I've already voted on this post. So we should get user 24, has already voted on post 10. Perfect. Now let's go and try to delete a post. So I'm gonna set the vote dir to be zero. And let's see what happens. It says I successfully deleted the post or, or the vote. And let's just do a quick query. We can see nothing is there. 
And then if we try to delete a vote or, or a like that doesn't exist, we can see that vote does not exist. All right, guys, we've actually implemented all of the voting logic right there. The only other thing that we need to do is when we retrieve a post, right, whether it's through the get all posts or even a get one post, I want to have my fast API send the number of votes as a property, as a field here, so that, uh, you know, when we load up posts on our front end application, they can see the number of likes that a post has. That's usually how most applications work. And I would like it to have it automatically send that information instead of having to send another query to our backend to see, you know, what is the total number of votes. I want it to do it automatically anytime we retrieve any post. And uh, that's going to be a little bit more complex. Uh, we're going to have to learn uh, a little bit more about SQL, uh, start digging into some of the weeds of uh, SQL and Postgres. And then uh, once we learn how to do it with uh, regular SQL, we have to see if we can do this with um, SQL Alchemy. After I finished recording all of the uh, voting logic, or at least the router that handles voting, I realized there's one tiny bug. And that is that right now, there's no logic to actually detect if the user's trying to vote on a post that doesn't exist. Because if they want to vote on a post that doesn't exist, I want to ideally send a 404. So what we're going to do is we're going to implement that logic and it's going to be really simple. We're just going to query for the post based off of the ID first. If it doesn't exist, we're going to throw an exception. So just like we've done with pretty much all of our other routers, whenever someone tries to access a post that they don't, uh, that doesn't exist, then we're just going to simply send a 404. So let's start off by making our query. I'm going to do db.query. We'll say models.post. And then what we're going to do is we're going to filter based off of the post ID. So we'll say models.post.id equals equals vote.post underscore ID. And then we're going to grab the first one. And we'll save this in a variable called post. Then we'll say if not post, so if the post doesn't exist, then we're going to raise an HTTP exception. And the status code is going to be a 404. And the detail will be the usual F string that says uh, post with ID, and then we'll pass in the ID. does not exist. And that's all we have to do. And that's going to fix that little bit, that little tiny bug. And you'll see that when we get to the testing section, we can now test to see if the post doesn't exist as well.